two, one, go. Hi, I'm George, and this is a follow-up to the airbag inflation experiment we did a couple of weeks ago. Now, I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who made suggestions of ways of improving that experiment. And the general consensus was basically having a fixed volume uh, with rigid walls so that it couldn't expand, and then connect some kind of a small tube to that so that the volume changes that happened as a result of the pressure change were a lot more visible. And so let's have a look at a couple of experiments that we did this week. We got a can from powdered chocolate milk because it had an airtight removable lid. The whole can is light and it shouldn't expand or contract with the small pressure changes. We then drilled a hole in the lid so that we could pass a flexible tube through it. We went with the suggestion to make a U-bend in some flexible hosing and partially fill it with water. Now the problem with a straight U-bend is that you'll likely spill some of that water and it might misbehave under acceleration. So we spiraled the tube on a piece of coro flute and mounted it above the can with a bracket. This way we could see the water from above and it shouldn't spill if the whole thing turned upside down. We then got some food colouring and mixed it with a small amount of water and sucked up some of that liquid so that it was in the middle of the spiral. This way the liquid could move one way or the other as needed. So how sensitive is this setup? If I just warm the can with my hands, you can clearly see the pressure increase. So here we are at the launch site. We used a couple of cable ties to mount the whole experiment inside of the fairing. The nose cone again with the downward facing camera is mounted on top. And the whole thing then gets taped to the top of the rocket. We can then fill the rocket with 1.3 litres of water and take it out to the launch pad. So let's see it in action. Three, two, one. And here's the onboard view. We'll look at it first in real time and then slow it down and have a look in more detail. During the boost, you can see the meniscus get flattened, but after burnout, it goes back to normal. You can see clearly that the pressure starts increasing inside of the can as the rocket goes up and the water starts spiralling out. Just as the parachute deploys with the rocket pointing down, there was enough water in the open downward facing tube that the negative G's forced it out and it also siphoned the rest of the water from the tube. The open end of the tube was just pointing up inside of the rocket. I wonder if you could calibrate the water position so that you could directly read the altitude from it. That's not a bad attempt for closest to the pen. Here's the dyed water that sprayed all throughout the experiment bay. For the second experiment, we closed off the end of the tube with a small deflated water balloon. Hopefully this time we would see it inflate a little as the rocket went up. The rocket was prepped the same way as before and we pressurized it to 110 psi. Three, two, one, go! And here's the onboard video. You can clearly see that the balloon had inflated. On the way down, you can also see from the backward movement of the water that the pressure is increasing again. Yeah. 
So we see that this approach was definitely a lot more sensitive and you could clearly see the change in pressure. Now, if you want us to try some experiments, within reason of course, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Next week we go back to the Typhoon series and we'll have a look at the details of the parachute deployment mechanism. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Three, two, one, go! Beautiful flight, George. Okay, the range is safe.